Brothgar! Why don't you just use Wii's warts to cool your base? Well, the answer is I've done that a lot. For like the last 500 hours of gameplay, pretty much Wii's warts is one of my go-to things to cool the base. However, in the last ultimate automation challenge, my goal is to automate everything inside the base. So I've created many liquid loops that are actually working to try and cool certain areas that are important to the base down and create fancy cooling loops with lots of logic. However, just because I'm doing that doesn't mean that Weezwarts are not a good option. The only downside I could see to using Weezwarts might be that you can't actually control how cold they get. Or can you? I had an idea, so it's time for an experiment. All right, so here we go. I have a fresh map here. It is the auto Weezwart map. And inside of here, I'm going to fill. Oh, here we go with hydrogen at a temperature of 320 degrees Kelvin and new no germs. Yeah, that ought to work. So if we take a look at the temperature inside of here, it's quite a bit warmer than everything else. Under furniture, you can find a little flower pot and place that inside of there. And inside of that, you can place a wort. Those are found over here in your cold biome over there. So one of these guys right over here, right over here, right over there, dig them up and then plant them inside of this little flower pot. And what that will do is it'll actually start to cool everything down that's around it. So I'm going to use my spawner tool. And there we go. Now if I move a dupe up there, I'm just using Alt-Q to move them around. In case people are wondering, I always get that question a lot. There we go. So now I have a little wheeze wart right there. And what we can see is that this will start to cool the area around it. So what it's doing is it's actually pulling in the gas like below it and then pushing it out above it. So if we actually watch this quite a bit faster, you can see what it's doing. You can see that there's kind of a lower pressure area down here and then there's a higher pressure zone right above it. And you can see very, very quickly that we're to 24 degrees Celsius right there, but down here, we're still kind of a little bit warmer. Overall, it's cooling everything around it. So you can see here, it doesn't take very long for it to cool a space like this you know, from whatever it was, 40 something degrees Celsius down to a nice comfortable 20 degrees. The problem is that it keeps getting colder. Look at this. So you can see here, we're just about through cycle two, but the temperature is now down to 10 degrees Celsius. So now we're talking about getting down to the spot where things are chilled. My duplicates were hot last time, but let's see what Ellie says about this. Oh yeah, you start to think that it's cold, chilly surrounding. So you're getting a debuff as far as, you know, how how hot or cold the actual environment is for your duplicates. So that'll make your stress go up. Here's the other thing is if you have plants inside of here, you're trying to control the temperature of a farm, you know, a wheeze wart could freeze your farm out and that wouldn't be a good thing. Now, one of the ways we can combat this is if we were to put a space heater right next to it and we could try to balance it out, but then that would consume power. I mean, not a ton of power, you know, these things that would take 120 watts, but it isn't that huge really. But still, I mean, you got to spend power to kind of keep from making things too cold. So how could we possibly automate this? Hmm. All right, so here's my idea. I have a wheeze wart here, and what I've done is I've surrounded it by mechanized airlocks. The reason I'm doing that is because I have an automation signal that I can send to these doors in order for them to open. So what I can do is I can add to this is a thermal sensor. And I can place it really wherever I want and then plug that into the doors so that I can shut off the flow of gas to this wheeze wart and hopefully stop it from cooling once I reach a certain temperature. I haven't actually done this before, so I don't know if it's going to work or not. So what I'm going to do is set this to be open, you know, and let the wheeze wart function if it's above 20 degrees Celsius. Just to make sure I have the right temperature on everything, I'm going to reset everything. So now I have one kilogram at 46.8 degrees Celsius. All right, so right off the bat here, I can tell you that there's a big difference between the previous experiment and this one. And that is the fact that there's a lot of thermal mass that's been added to this experiment. And that is the copper ore that is make, that these doors are made of which is 400 kilograms each. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to reset this experiment and I'm going to use a bunker door. Reason being is because it's 500 kilograms, but it's a fair bit bigger. So 
it has less thermal mass than these copper doors. <laughs> but you can see what, what it, if they're brought in at a low temperature, how much of a difference that makes. Ah, and here's another thing. You can see how this system is actually continuing to work just fine, even though the sides are closed off. This one here is not open just yet. So you can see that it's pulling it in from the bottom and then kicking it out the top. So really, you could probably get away with just one door at the bottom if we really just wanted to minimize this. Yeah, look at that big difference there. Huh, cool. That was kind of fun to see. Doors, you could build on top of doors, right? So if I place a mechanized airlock over here, just kind of dig out the space above it, and then, yeah, see? You can actually build a flower pot on top of a door. And then when that door goes open, ah, you can see that it no longer operates. Or so we say it, it is missing a foundation. That doesn't mean it won't operate. At least I don't think so. All right, so if I do this, we can see that the hydrogen above that, you know, it's really not cooling down at all. I think we've really stunted the ability for this hydrogen to do anything. Let's go ahead and reset this just to make sure. Ah, this thing's kind of a pain in the butt because I can't set the temperature of the tiles and the gas at the same time. All right, so there we go. Pretty much everything here is about 40, 45 degrees Celsius. It's pretty darn close to it. And what I want to see is that while this is closed, the temperature really isn't going to go down at all. It's pretty much just what it is. 41 degrees, 41 degrees, not a big deal. We're definitely not seeing a flow and we're not seeing a cold spot up here. So if I take this automation wire and I plug it into the door, what we should see is that this will now activate. Oh, look at that. It disabled the wheeze wart. Interesting. So I don't even need this at all. I could just get rid of that. <laughs> So watch this, if this goes below 20 degrees Celsius, then it closes the door and the wheeze wart activates. If it goes above, you know, let's say whatever temperature I want, it deactivates. Bam, automated wheeze wart. That was just too easy. <laughs> oh, and it gets better than that. We. All right, so I tried to put this on top of a pneumatic door. However, it doesn't actually work. All right, so we're approaching the temperature here. It's about 21 degrees Celsius. Once it hits 20, this door will open, turning off the wheeze wart, and I should be left with a nice temperate atmosphere up here. Bingo, just like that. It opened, it closed, it's gonna run a little bit more, and this should cycle until it kind of balances out. That's awesome, I love that. How cool is that? It's super simple. I know, right? I gotta find a way to complicate this. The thing is, I don't think I can. I just made an automated flower pot. All right, so that works really, really good. Let's go ahead and apply this to something that would, you know, actually be useful. All right, so here's one setup I think that might actually work and work pretty good. So what I'm doing here is I'm letting this wheeze wart run in this carbon dioxide environment. It started around 50 degrees Celsius. I'm going to try to get it down and keep it running right around 20 degrees Celsius. The inlet temperature of the water is roughly around 26 degrees Celsius. So it's going to be a little bit hotter. Actually, if you look down here, yeah, you can see it's 24.5. So as the water is being fed into these plants, it should try to go up in temperature. Plus we have this light that's being given off um, to make these plants grow, and that's putting a little bit of heat energy into this environment. All right, so it's been a few cycles, and the wheeze wart has worked its way all the way down to about 20 degrees Celsius down here. So you can see that the bristle blossoms are still a little bit warmer at about 25 degrees. They're slowly dropping down, and it's a little bit warmer on the right, about 28 or so. The point is, everything here is back to a growing condition, and it's all thanks to this wheeze wart. All right, so I'm just about to the temperature threshold here. We should see this door open and close. And now it's not plugged in, so this door actually runs kind of slow. It just looks fast because I'm running the game at a, a very accelerated pace right now. We saw the door opened and closed right there to deactivate the wheeze wart. It's working. It's working great. Here, let me get away from the temperature so we can see it actually function. And this is normal speed. <laughs> uh, how about... 3x speed. 
Gosh, I haven't played the game at normal speed in forever. <laughs> so it's 20.1. Weezwort's running. It's keeping the bristle blossoms nice and cool. Then once that clicks over, we disable the Weezwort, and now the temperature is going to start to go back up because these bristle blossoms are at a slightly higher temperature. Awesome. So put a Weezwort inside your farm, hook it up to a uh, thermal sensor, stick a door underneath it, and boom, you have an automated temperature system for your farm. And it doesn't even cost you any power at all. Then once that clicks over, we disable the wheeze wart, and now the temperature is going to start to go back up because these bristle blossoms are at a slightly higher temperature. Awesome. So put a wheeze wart inside your farm, hook it up to a uh, thermal sensor, stick a door underneath it, and boom, you have an automated temperature system for your farm and it doesn't even cost you any power at all so there you have it guys i think that was a pretty handy little setup right there it doesn't cost you any power at all and we can automate all sorts of farms with this thing absolutely awesome if you enjoyed this little episode here of oxygen not included let me know down there in the comment section below if you have different ideas for different ways we can use an automated wheeze wart let me know down there if i've earned a subscription then thank you so much for that have a great day guys stay awesome peace brothgar out. That is dope.